So I need to drink more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just drunk talk. <laughs> Sweet, wonderful drunk talk. Welcome to Who's Drinking Wine, <laughs> a craft beer podcast where a bunch of friends sit around drinking beers, talk about it, and just have a generally great time. Today, special episode, we're here at Quaffon Brewing, the brewing, the tap room in Bloomington. I already can't speak because I'm so excited. The brooming. <laughs> I'm joined alongside my usual drinking buddy co-host, Burke Scott. Welcome back. And we have a special guest today, John Hancuff. Hey. Hi. In... In tap room, it's not in studio. Yeah. Uh, it is February 28th, the last day of February. Uh, we're concluding our mini brewery series. We were at Upland last week in Quaffon, and I think we'll try some more. Definitely. This has been fun yeah, already. Sure. We haven't even done this show, but I know it's going to be fun. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Who's Drinking What? Leave that T off. Gmail at Who's Drinking What? You can do the whole thing at gmail.com. If you guys have any suggestions for the show, games we can play uh any musicians out there i would love to just maybe change up the music from time to time nothing wrong with what we got but if you want to submit something we'll we'll try to fit it in there and use it as our intro outros enough of that guys let's drink some beer right (laughs) all right right. oh that is strong (laughs) one word what do you say brooks one word one word. I don't have one word for it. I'm just gonna. Right. Go, I'm just gonna go into it. But uh, okay. it's a lot of words. I got the Quaffon Yellow Dwarf. Uh, it's a hoppy wheat. Uh, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. I think there's like a 80 acre hoppy wheat beer or something like that. It tastes pretty similar to that. It's really hoppy up front and finishes pretty witty. I like it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and oh, I, I guess I should say too, we're just doing exclusively Quaffon or Big Woods, which is kind of like the specialty beers of Quaffon. So, and John, what do you have over there, sir? Uh, I got the Quaffon Hudang. Uh, it's a black IPA, and uh, the the first sip, there wasn't much initially, but then as it got to the back of my mouth, the hop just kind of spread out. It's it's pretty good. It's really good. Super hoppy. Um, but it's real smooth. I like it. And it's yeah. very dark. Like, oh, that is God, like black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you get kind of like a roasty flavor up front? Is it like subtle? Is that what it is? No. You no. Know, uh, I mean, now that you mention that, I, I, I can I get a little bit of the roastiness. Uh, but initially, there wasn't anything. Like I huh. said, until I got to the back, and then sure. all of a sudden, it just kind of exploded. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Nice. But sweet like good, not like sweet like... Good sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like well, Matthew McConaughey, sweet. You know, ooh, sweet. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's good, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, perfect. Well, and we have a special contributor today, and, and it's Justin McIntosh from the Dump Buckets has graciously stopped by to see how it's doing. And, and actually, we're going to say the first round is actually Dump, Bunk Sp- Dump Bucket sponsored. <laughs> I am just butchering <laughs> names today. But uh, I'm going to let him join in and tell you what he's drinking. Well, I just want to start off by saying you uh, pronounce Macintosh correctly, so thank you. Um, uh, not even my own family can do that. <laughs> but uh, what I'm drinking right now is the uh, common necessity uh, from, uh, well, Big Wood slash Quaff On. It's actually a nitro uh, beer. Uh, I love, like, that flavor nitro gets from all these, like, tiny bubbles that it's, like, low carbonation, but it just makes it a little bit more creamy, a little bit more milky. Um Surprisingly, it's a hazelnut coffee stout. I don't know if I said that yet, but uh, the hazelnut uh, is very strong on the nose. Uh, the coffee is uh, very light as well, but it's actually it's a really smooth coffee flavor. Ooh. Uh, I really like uh, coffee beers because, uh, or at least good coffee beers, and this sure. is one of them, because if you get like a old coffee flavor it's surprisingly it'll start tasting like black pepper or jalapenos mm-hmm. uh but this one man it's just it's almost like a cup of joe it's like nice i want to wake up in the morning start drinking yeah. this and i don't know look at my wife and go like what where did i go from here <laughs> yeah. so it's kind of like it's oh, it's multitasking too oh oh yeah you, you know <laughs> instead of drinking your coffee and your beer you get them both at the same time. Coffee's also a it's diuretic. A, yeah, there you, right there you go. Efficiency. There you go. Yeah. Do you generally like really <laughs> coffee flavored beers? Uh, right now I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I uh, I started in on malt, uh, then went to. Uh, 
I got in on like all the dark beers. It was like the only thing I could mm-hmm. get into because I used to be like a girl drink drunk. Uh, <laughs> it's like all my friends were like, "Give me a Budweiser, give me a whiskey," and I'm like, "Caramel apple teeny, thank you, I love it." <laughs> sure. And then uh, as soon as I got into beer, my friend like. It's really weird. It's an association with tea. So I like the darker flavors. I like the weird spices. Then I went straight to hops. And now I'm going back to the additives where it's like coffee, nice. like interesting fruits. But uh, this one's delicious. Uh, cheers, guys. And yeah. enjoy your beer. Uh, uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no. Thank you for stopping by, Justin. Thank you for helping us uh, get going here. And, and I want to say uh, the dump buckets, they're kind of doing... A more video approach, but it's it's craft beer enthusiasts, loosely based in Cincy area or the Indy area. But you guys just did some stuff in Cincy. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, we kind of were uh, went on a trip to Cincinnati that was spawned by our wives. We didn't know about it until like the day before. Uh, really? It was our Valentine's Day gift huh. on the 14th. We made sure that they were pampered and treated. <laughs> uh, the week after that, we got wasted. Uh, so. What, what better gift than yeah, sure. uh, that? So, uh, yeah. And I'll say, if any of you guys go to Cincy, we did uh, four to five stops. Uh, Moral Line is a great place. Uh, but we were really impressed by uh, um, Big Tree Brewing. Big Tree. Big Tree. They had some amazing beers, uh, as well as uh, Reinheis, which I uh, could yeah. be wrong about this. Reinheis, I believe one of the brewers or one of the owners actually got his start at Sun King. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's a kind of an Indiana connection mm-hmm. there. But both Reinheis as well as Big Tree, I can't get enough of them. Yeah. Uh, we brought probably about 48 six-packs home. <laughs> so uh, we're working on those slowly. Yeah. I was enjoying following you guys' tweets when you were down there. And thank was- you. Oh, thank you kindly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all we do. I think uh, we've only been on Twitter for – probably just about two years when we have over mm. 12,000 tweets. I think we're at 13,000 now, maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, we retweet a lot, and uh, sure. there's a lot of uh, people out there who says, no, we didn't make it until we were retweeted by the dump buckets. And I'm saying, hey, if you just had an interesting post or a picture of a pretty beer, <laughs> we're retweeting it. So. That's- <laughs> well, Justin, I want to thank you for, for coming by. Stick around and watch the show. Uh, they, they're on YouTube, so follow them there. They do some really funny, interesting stuff. Yeah, uh, you can see it all on YouTube. It's actually on my art page, uh, JJM Artwork on YouTube. But if you go to uh, thedumpbuckets.com, it leads back to my art page. And you can see our videos there. And you can actually see uh, my paintings. I actually paint bars, breweries, and beer-related material. Uh, I've done a few of Sun King. I just finished one of Fountain Square. And uh, starting tonight, I'm working on one of Flat 12. I have a beautiful photograph of their, their brewing equipment. And I can't wait to get started on that one. All right, well, we're looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, Justin. And real quick, let me get... I got the Quaffon Busted Knuckle. I'll get this out of the way quick. We'll get to the fun stuff, although this is a lot of fun. It's listed as a porter, um, but it is... It's like a hoppy porter. It's It's got a lot of flavor going on. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. It is probably the signature Quaffon beer. Yeah, I agree. I've had it quite a few times just wonderful i kind of stayed away from it today i want to try some new stuff a little bit but all right um and i should explain john handcuff is by i kind of said that on top but um (laughs) john is is another guy who is kind of kind of well known for his local comedy but he might be one of a bagger at kroger actually recognized me the other day really yeah Uh. to give some validity to what you're saying right there (laughs) yeah yeah. see that's yeah when you're recognized by a bagger at kroger (laughs) yeah you're but, doing big things. Yeah. I've never been recognized by a bagger at Kroger. Yeah. <laughs> I've been confused with a shoplifter at Kroger's before. <laughs> you kind of look like the type. It didn't uh, turn out as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm sure John's experienced. But no, I'm excited to get you on because I've also heard that you're a very big beer fan. Well, I think I told you that. Maybe. Uh, you <laughs> did, but also a few other guys. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell Potts said that. Austin Fields. Yeah. So. I mean, that. that's... The modern equivalent of saying I have a drinking problem, well, sure. basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, but now yeah. we're getting recognition, and it's like an art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's still, and it's not whispered like it used to be. You know, <laughs> you, oh, it John's used to be John, a drinker. right? John's an alcoholic. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like no, he he likes craft beer. Yeah, there you it's go. a badge of honor as opposed to you know a reason you lose your family. 
or Do you whatever. have a lot of other badges of honor? I'm going to guess this isn't your only one. Um, probably. I don't know. Yeah. It's the one I'm most proud of, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you say your wife is the most proud of it? Oh, um, that John is such a good man, but what I really love is his drink. Probably <laughs> not the first thing she brings up. Um, As he takes another sip. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. I didn't know the distinction between Big Woods and Quaffon until... I mean, I still I didn't, don't even know if I know. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Honest. You you kind of mentioned it earlier. You got it. You got it over there. Well, I was saving it for later, but let's bring it out now because oh, okay. uh, we'll do our Brewers Spotlight. And it started out in 2009 as Big Woods, which is the right. restaurant in Nashville, Indiana. Which is fantastic. Here. Yes, it is. The, they got great food. Both, both the one in the alley and the pizza place are amazing. Oh, yeah. I love it. And in 2012, the owner decided that you know the part the beer part was so popular to kind of split it into Quaffon and make that more of their commercial wing so now okay. they can do distributing through that hmm. so when you see it labeled Quaffon you're going to be your busted knuckle your hair trigger your six foot blondes your yellow dwarfs these are like their their standard ones yeah uh the ones that are still labeled big woods are more of like they're just they're putting it in the kegs it's their specialty brews for for kind, kind of, of local local stuff rooms. okay yeah. So outside of this location here in Bloomington and in Nashville, I'm not sure you can get the ones that are labeled Big Woods. Big here, Woods, so. huh? Well, that's interesting. And and of course, for those who might not be familiar, quaff is a verb for drink on, right. basically to drink, drink heavily, <laughs> enjoy imbibing, yeah. uh, which right. yeah. is what this whole show is based yeah. on. Uh, I. I remember uh, when they first started brewing, and I went over and tried it, and I did not like it. Yeah. I, didn't, I mean, I, I think the, with so many of these places that have popped up over the last few years, I think you could, it's cool to see that evolution as they, sure. get, they get a handle on the process, and, they, and they, uh, they, they start to figure out what their strengths are. I think the beer that they make now is a great beer in general, but it's so much better than what they they made when they first started well and i guess i can't say that i had them that early but i have had a few others that it seems like in the first year to maybe two years that sometimes that you can see the building blocks and maybe some of their creativity and what they want to do yeah but yeah you're right it, it takes some time to really perfect it yeah kind of like comedy you know you can't yeah. just walk yeah. in and be good like you might have some good pieces but yeah it's rough yeah and i i i like that i think the the problem a lot of the breweries have is they come out with too many to start with and there's really no difference you know that they there's there's an amber and a blonde and and like all these slight variations that you really can't taste a difference in yeah. uh, i think initially a lot of them have a good ipa and a good stout and everything in between is basically the same and and they they seem like they they chose some areas that were a little different, where you could be distinct, and so yeah, I, yeah, I like yeah. Them. And I'm gonna have that six foot blonde probably later. I'm not gonna rope myself in, but I mean, it's. I'd like a six foot blonde later too. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you guys want to share one? Is that? <laughs> we'll split it. <laughs> we're we're good drinking buddies. You know? <laughs> it's, it's part of what we do. <laughs> but yeah, they I they, I like. They're probably one of my favorite local breweries because they do have those standards, and then they like this this busted knuckle. It's listed as a porter, but it's yeah. it's got a twist to it. They oh yeah, do a good spectacular. Job. Yeah. Well, and and this place, you, I mean, they've got what twenty five beers on tap, but I, when I come here, I, the majority of the time I'll get one of their beers unless yeah. there's something crazy on tap that I haven't seen anywhere else. So, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and and. The, uh, what John's talking about, they've probably got 10 of their own, but yeah, like another 15 from, I mean, Smutty Nose, Oak and Barrel, uh, Great Divide. So they've got good ones, but you're right. I, I don't have any interest in those with seeing what these guys are doing. Yeah. yeah. God, that busted knuckle's so good. Sometimes <laughs> that's one of those that I like because it gets better as you get closer to the bottom. Yeah. Sometimes they can be really good at the top and they're not as good at the bottom. Sure. Yeah. Not this one. Uh. <laughs> John, you've been in Bloomington for a while. Yep, since 92. 
Yeah. That's quite a while. Yeah, I came down to go to IU and just never left. So There you go. Yeah. I think I can, a lot of people can say that. Well, and I think a lot of it depends on where you come from. And I came from South Bend, so I got down here and I was it was so much better <laughs> than South Bend that I was like, you know what, I, I don't need to push my luck. Yeah. Well, I didn't go to school here, but I went to school in Muncie at Ball State okay. and then moved down here, yeah. and I'll say the same of that. <laughs> yeah. But giving up for Ball State, though, you guys have the Hurrah. Yeah. Oh, that is an amazing bar and probably the first best bar in Indiana. So I've heard I've never been there. I've heard a lot of people say that it's great though and they get there if I ever get a chance to. So they mm. they kind of got in on the craft craze much earlier like when it was when there really weren't Indiana ones like Upland maybe had just started but they were bringing in like Dogfish Head and stuff mm-hmm. before Dogfish Head went away and they they had like would have a 100 different things on tap and the whole the whole bar is themed like Beowulf. You know, it's this <laughs> 14th century German beer hall style yeah. with wow. like a Grendel painting and, and, and like that's awesome. helmets and horns and stuff. Nice. So it's uh, Also, too, they started brewing their own beer recently. Uh, oh, and, really? But you can only get it there. It's like really small batches and they go really quickly, but I think it's like Wolfhead Brewing. If you see that on Twitter or anything, I believe that's them. Huh. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for that. But what I was leading up to, John, All right. March is my favorite time of year. I think it's Brooks's. I'm a huge college basketball nut. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and and right now, if, if you watch college basketball, they're talking about the who's in, who's out, you know, bubble teams. I use kind of there. Are you are you a big college basketball fan? Yeah, I mean, I I grew up playing basketball, um, and I'm one of those uh, IU basketball Notre Dame football people that a lot of people hate. <laughs> but um, don't like. But I, I can't. Yeah, I can't help it. You know, I grew up in <laughs> South Bend, and uh, I just appreciated the way IU played growing up. You know, it's how we were taught to play basketball. Sure. Yeah. And uh, but I don't watch every game as much as I used to for a couple reasons i mean i have kids and uh, and there's a lot more late start times it seems like now yeah. during the week yeah those nine o'clock games they yeah a lot less seven and uh yeah. and i also just i i i get too worked up <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so uh yeah it, it gets a, sometimes especially this year it, and last year it yeah. can get real frustrating i got real and, bad in the past couple of years if i I get real nervous during the games. And like, I'll yeah. drink like eight beers in like 30 minutes yeah. just because I'm just like going and going. And I'll be, God damn it, I did it again. But <laughs> You're nervous drinking, Brooks? It, yeah. Well, and my wife tells me that every time. That and ner- then if you got drinker. Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and then you start getting on there and posting stuff that you delete <laughs> yeah. when you wake up in yeah, the morning. Yeah. yeah. Why so. did I say that? Yeah. Well, and I worked with a guy that's actually got a very similar stance to you. You know, he, he came to IU in the 90s and – he actually gets more worked up for the Big Ten tournament uh-huh. than the NCAA tournament. Yeah, really. And, and I was asking, and I, I think I found that of a lot of Hoosier fans, which I think is unusual, but they have a lot of pride in winning the conference more than the NCAA. Yeah, but, I can, I can see that. You know, and I, I don't know. It's different. Here's the old man getting ready to talk. It's <laughs> different for this generation because when I came down here, the first year IU made the Final Four and got screwed against Duke by, uh, was it Teddy Valentine was the official? Probably. Who, he's still, yeah. he's yeah. still officiating. This I know day. people hate that guy around and here. So my first year, IU goes to the Final Four. My second year, IU's ranked number one all year until Alan Henderson gets hurt right before the, the end of the season. So, I mean, that's what I grew up with. Sure. So it's, it's doubly frustrating to see what yeah. things are like now. So is yeah. it just it's, bedlam in the streets right here where we are? during that time I, it it's a lot of fun that's for sure i mean <laughs> yeah, 2002 yeah. was the craziest when yeah. we made the final four mm-hmm. and people were crossing kirkwood hanging on power lines it was insane like i left because i didn't want to see someone die right it was hanging it, on power lines that was a thing yeah, I, they're probably were. I think whatever the, they've got those decorative I, I hope it wasn't the yeah, yeah it was power. oh it was bad um, they're they're like twenty feet above the ground, 
and mo- probably drunk. Probably. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but, like, I was down here when Knight got fired, and that was crazy, too. People storming the president's Gosh. You know, house, and, yeah, it's... That kind of killed IU basketball, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I respected the way Knight's teams played, but as an IU grad, he did and said a lot of things that were really kind of embarrassing to the university. Like, uh, like there was an NCAA tournament where he, uh, he and Calvert Chaney were at a press conference, and uh, he's trying to illustrate how he disciplines his players by holding this whip up. Oh. It's like, uh, well, yeah. And the Connie Chung thing. Stress yeah. is like. like he, had a lot, he had a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I was young then. I My freshman year of college was the Kelvin Sanson year. Yeah. Ooh. So mm. that was my freshman year. We were pretty good, and I went to all the games. Aaron and, Gordon's year. Yeah. My sophomore year was bottom. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of. Was that Crean's first year was your sophomore yeah, year? Yeah. yeah. Sure was. So I, my my college experience for IU basketball wasn't the greatest. I've been a huge fan my whole life, but yeah. I still went to all the games, though. I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, because like I go to a lot of I go to a lot of IU football games, but mm-hmm. I'm actually in the stadium for less than half the game usually. Sure. Is that how you were with those basketball teams? Would you sit through entire games? I don't know if we'd stay the whole game. I mean, we'd get season tickets, and we'd go to most of them. I don't. Yeah. We might leave early, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's a good good way to put it. But <laughs> yeah. me, I mean, there's me and a couple guys that were just really big IU fans. And we're yeah. like, oh, we're, let's just go. I mean, yeah. why not? Go watch a game in Assembly Hall. Why not? Yeah, but, uh, you know, that's another thing as I've gotten older. Like like uh, Notre Dame during the Charlie Weiss years, mm-hmm. the last couple, they looked awful. And I'm not going to sit through a game and watch. Oh, yeah. Is that I, Jimmy Clausen? <laughs> yeah. I'm a big Bears fan, and when I saw them sign him, I was yeah. like, you guys want to lose. Well, that you know guy's what? A- if you – People can rag on Weiss, but he got Clawson and Brady Quinn drafted. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, he he has some sort of talent. I think Notre Dame was a little too eager to pull the trigger on him, and um, I can't remember. Was it the guy before him? Willingham? Yeah. Ty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, and, and I think Weiss's best year was with Willingham's guys. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Weiss didn't know what he was doing with the college game yeah 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 Yeah, it's not like the nfl where you can sign guys in the middle of the year oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. well and that's sports all right i think that's gonna bring our first round to a close we're starting to get low um we'll be right back with the weather is that what you're gonna (laughs) we're gonna be right back it's yeah because last week it had snowed eight inches on us yeah we had quite a trek did you guys do last saturday yeah Yeah. good lord (laughs) yeah alex brown was our guest yeah Oh, did, off his car, he sheared his radio antenna off his car. <laughs> yeah, he brought, we came into Upland, and he walks in with an antenna in his hand. Oh, like, yeah, this is what I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, we're not going to do it on air because I listened back to it. It was not that interesting. But uh, during the break, I'm going to have him blind pick two uh, beers off the menu. Then we're going to uh, get some tasters and see if these guys can pick them out. Okay. So, We'll have that, and of course, uh, in the last half of the show, we're going to have this day in beer history, so stay tuned for all of that. Thank you for listening. We'll be right back. Shadows fall to my window. All right, guys. Welcome back to Who's Drinking What? Games round time. hey yo. Uh, but actually, you know what? Um, John was nice enough to come on. Um, you know, Brooks, actually, I, I like how eloquently you can put this. <laughs> okay. We always have okay. a question for our guests. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, like Pete said, every week we ask our guests, what uh, what beer really turns you on more to the craft beer scene more than just, say, sitting around drinking a Bud Light every night? Um, if there is one. Yeah, I mean, I... I sp- specifically remember uh the the first time i had this beer and uh i mean up to that point uh before i i had this beer i i I would pretty much drink anything sure um and there was i i didn't understand the differences and i'd buy a lot of stuff and not like it i hadn't figured things out 
Um, but then uh, I was at the Comedy Attic, and they, they have, I would say it's a pretty good selection of beers, um, uh, bottles and, and cans. And I had a Robert the Bruce. Ah. And uh, I'd, never, I'd never had it before, and I remember drinking it, and I was sitting next to Josh Cox, uh, a great local comic here, and uh, I looked at him, and I pointed to the bottle, and I was like, this is really good. Um, but I didn't say it loud enough that Jared would come out of the green room and, and yell at me. But uh, so I, I drank that uh, whenever I could get it for a while. Um, and then I started trying more th three Floyds and and started to figure out, you know, a brown ale and sure. an IPA. And, and the, the breakthrough with IPAs for me, um, w which looking back now is kind of crazy, was Hop Slam. Oh, oh, yeah. They got yeah. that on tap here. I saw. Uh, the, the first time I had it, I I was at the Atlas, uh, a great local bar here, and I didn't know how much alcohol was in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got two of them because the, <laughs> the first one was so good. I also didn't know how much it cost. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so there were a couple shocks, but... Yeah, I uh, one the, shock after another. <laughs> the, those Robert the Bruce was first, and then then Hop Slam was the one that that because uh, you know it's so different than Robert the Bruce. Sure, it kind of oh, gave yeah. me the it's like oh this this is a whole new world that I'm I I never want to live anywhere Did, else. <laughs> Didn't oh. even know existed. Yeah. Quick note for those that may not know, because I am looking at it, Hop Slam is listed as a 10% ABV. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. two of them is 20% yeah. ABV, right? Well, and uh, and I'd gone to the Atlas to kill time before dinner, so I hadn't <laughs> I hadn't eaten anything. So uh, yeah. Were you going to dinner with your wife? Or yeah. Were, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was going to go talk in an important business meeting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. you guys, you should invest in this, because <laughs> yeah. I'm. Um, with I don't know where that was going. Uh, oh, well, and actually, that's an interesting. I should ask you because they are an IPA and a, a very malty Scotch ale are very different. Do you now tend to favor more hoppy stuff or? Yeah, I, I think I, I don't know if I'm just just so in tune with Mother Nature and the rhythms of the earth, <laughs> but I don't know if you guys have this, but I as. Throughout the course of the year, there's different things appeal to me. Sure. You know, like during the summer, you know, I am I will I won't drink anything dark, and it's yeah. not by choice. It's just a, sure, a stout yeah. or a porter or a scotch ale, something like like that. Just doesn't appeal to me. So I'll go with something lighter, at least in color. Yes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But um, I, I mean, lately, I, like this time of year, for the last couple months, uh, it's just been bourbon barrels and scotch ales oh, and yeah. all, all that stuff but you know in the summer in Bloomington when it's 85 degrees and 80% humidity just the thought of a scotch ale yeah too heavy yeah yeah no I that's what I've kind of been saying um that the winter the darker and maltier stuff yeah. has really appealed to me but yeah I'm probably gonna go right back to the hoppier right. more right. yeah to lighter like once you get to bathing suit season Right? Yeah, you get away from go. the heavy, darker <clears throat> stuff. and yeah. <laughs> That's kind of when I first started drinking craft beers. Like, in college, summertime, I'd, I'd put some shandies down by the pool at our apartment. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where I got my, my real start, I guess. But anyways. So, speaking of summertime activity, John, if you're going to go kayaking, <laughs> maybe out at Griffey Lake. Yeah, this, this bit's not finished yet. So, uh, <laughs> What beer would you bring to that? Oh, what would I bring? Um, you know, uh, for something like that, uh, I think I would go with like a champagne velvet, oh, uh, you know, nice and cold, yeah, sure. real yeah. light. Like you, you're getting drunk, but you're, you feel hydrated, <laughs> right? No, I like yeah. that. That is great. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that was, that was what Upland's making it now, but that was originally a, a Terre Haute yeah. recipe pre-prohibition or something, right? Yeah, oh, okay. I think it's a prohibition style pilsner they call it, yeah, and I think it's six percent, which usually pilsners are more like yeah. four, maybe five. And I think they they couldn't find all of the original recipe, so they had to. I may be totally wrong in this, I but I think they had to. They had I've to improvise it. a little bit. I also heard that when they did the initial release in Terre Haute, they had a horse-drawn cart that delivered the kegs to the bars there. 
That's and then Budweiser sued them. Yeah, so probably. I can get down yeah. With they that. Hate <laughs> Maybe they had Shetland ponies pull it, or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Not thirty-five. <laughs> it took thirty-five Shetland ponies to. <laughs> so Why are they working those tiny horses so hard? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, well uh, and and. Not to hijack this for a second, but this is something I've been thinking about with the... Uh, first of all, I've become sort of an Indiana beer snob in that if given the choice in Indiana, I'll just drink an Indiana beer because they're so good. Yeah. There's there's no point in, in not uh, drinking it if you're in the state. And uh, I'm just uh, like, that's my thing anyway, like supporting a local business. But I, I was wondering what the brewery and, and winery perspective is on the Sunday sales not going through, because that's got to be a huge boon for places that's like Upland and Function and, yeah. and Big Woods, who on Sundays, that's, their carryout sales are crazy. Yeah, and, and they can fill growlers on Sundays too, right? Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. you can go to a brewery and do about anything yeah. they can do on a Saturday. I yeah, think as long as the brewery. beer's brewed there, right, you can right, get a growler. Because yeah. they... They can't fill growlers here on Sundays because they don't brew here. Yeah. Uh, really? You know, that's got to be really good for towns like us in Indy. But, yeah. like, if you're yeah, I know. further I away that. where you're not near a brewery. But I get the feeling, too, those people that live further away, because I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Good point. They're probably less likely to be drinking craft beer anyway, <laughs> even if they had one. Although I will say the first time I went to Salt Creek, um, the... This guy, I see this guy come walking down the road with a box full of growlers. And yep. he comes in and gets them all filled and then just walks back, walks down, back the road. down the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Salt Creek, off into the for abyss. those that don't know, <laughs> is between Bloomington and Bedford, and it is very rural. <laughs> it, it was like a, like a service station, right? Yes. They brew the beer like in the pit where you would go under a car to change the oil. Oh, is that? I, I believe that's that. what it is. Yeah, that's I didn't great. know that. They have a tap room in Bloomington now. Yeah, right? they took yeah. over McCree's, right? Uh, no, they're over. Oh uh, well, there's the, the one on the west side, but I think they took over oh, McCree's. They have one is now? McCree's closed? No, I think it's McCree's food, but the only beer on tap now is Salt Creek. Oh, really? That would make sense. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that would make sense. Yeah, that's cool. I gotta check that out. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to. Anybody from uh, not McCree's uh, Salt, <laughs> Salt Creek listening, I I want to do one of these shows there uh, eventually. So yeah, they're yeah, for So sure. you've been to their tap room and need the, more, whatever it is. I've been to the one here. I've heard plenty of stories because the guy who oh, yeah. does the music for this show, Tim O'Malley, has played down at Salt okay. Creek a few times. And it's a really cool there. little little place, and and the food's great. So yeah, I yeah. heard that too. Mm-hmm. So. All right, sorry. Anyway, I no, just... No, you're yeah. right. Time to play some games, guys. There we right. go. Um, so what we're doing is another modified version of Pick Your Poison, where these guys, we've taken all the Quaffon slash Big Wood beers off the menu. They've blind-picked two of them, and now we're going to see if they can guess from the sample what they picked. And Brooks, I'm going to let you lead it off. Be a gentleman and show John how it's done. <laughs> Why not? So Brooks is choosing, and he's got two dark ones sitting in front of him. Which mm-hmm. actually, now that I look at the list, I think quafon has got a lot of yeah. darker brews. They really specialize in that. All right, well, I'm going to guess this one's the... Co- uh, <laughs> hold on. All right. I'm going to guess it's the Common Necessity. The Common Necessity, which is the on nitro coffee stout, right? Damn, it is on nitro. Do you, do you pick up something interesting, like, on the back end of that? Some coffee notes. I don't know. It's got a little roasty taste to it. No, Brooks, what that is... You have the Houdang. Oh, that's a nice mm, That's a black idea. Mm-hmm. You got the Houdang. You didn't pick wow. up the... It is a very bitter hot note, so I guess okay. I can see how you're kind of confusing it for coffee. Uh, all right, so Brooks, Brooks is 0 for 1 right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, John. All right. Here Go goes. ahead. Now, John's got one well, dark one, but he's got a golden I'm, amber. I'm going to guess right now it's the hair trigger. <laughs> Based on the smell. Yeah. It's and pretty the taste easy confirms too. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the hair trigger. And yeah. Yeah, that, that was impressive. Well, I mean, there's nothing else that... Uh, I, the, that's you know, usually the, how it works out. Yeah, yeah you're there's right, nothing so. light that's hoppy like that. 
All right, Brooks. Uh, yeah. Time for your second one. All right. Got any guesses? I think this one's on Nitro. <laughs> I thought there so might I'm be. I'm a... guessing it's going to be the one I guessed before. <laughs> there might have been a clue. Yeah, a visual <clears throat> clue. Yeah, I'm going to go back to my original guess. So you're going with the common necessity. Yes. All right, Brooks, you're one for two. That's good. That's good. I like that. All right. I might have to take a take a sip of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, John. Damn. You're second, and right. this is for the win. All right. Or utter tie failure. Whoa. Cherry chocolate porter. Is it? Is Did this... you get it off to smell? Have you smelled this? I don't think I need you to, to taste. <clears throat> Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is. <laughs> Have you smelled it? Smell that. No, but it is. It is the cherry cordial. Oh my! God. Did you smell it? <laughs> that smells like ice cream. Wow. <laughs> does it taste? Does it taste as as? You know, it, cherry it's cordial? not because it smells just like the cherry cordials. But it, I don't think you want to try it. No. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. That's really cherry. Yeah. Good. Oh man. It's wow. That really and it. it the flavor keeps rounding out past when you expect yeah, it to. It, it's really, normally I oh. would n- never drink anything like that, but it's really not that bad. It's it, very man. interesting. Yeah. I don't know that I could get a whole 16 ounce of it. Yeah. I probably. Oof. I'll say, I think uh, I can pop back a few. Uh, <laughs> cherry, pop, get it, guys. <laughs> uh, I get it. Yes. Oh, it is my first cherry. <laughs> So I don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's powerful. It is. That is crazy. (laughs) And that's a game round. (laughs) Uh, So we've got one more. We're gonna get another round here from uh, Quafon. So we're gonna go to break. Stick back. We'll be right here with more beer. I like girls and cut off blue jeans Is that really oh so bad? Sometimes I think I miss my call Should have been Sir Galahad Memories, they come to me I find, I see places I'd like to be my mind It runs in circles For what seems Welcome back, we've got our second round in front of us guys They look delicious and extremely varied And I think this is very appropriate Quaff on gentlemen Blinkies I could not have gotten a more Diversely different (laughs) beer than my first one What'd you get? (laughs) What did you have for the first time? My first one was the Busted Knuckle, oh, which oh, is yeah. a very <clears throat> kind of bitter porter yeah, with a high alcohol content. And I'll just go ahead and, and launch into I got the Six Foot Blonde Blondale, which is very light and refreshing. And <laughs> It's my wife's favorite. By is the way. it? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. Ah. That's my way of saying you're a pussy. But <laughs> <laughs> no. it's all right. You know what? It's It's got an interesting, I wonder... I don't have that good of a taste. I wonder if it's like a coriander or something. It's not citrusy, mm-hmm. but it's kind of close to a lemon tinge to it. It's good. It's okay. Very refreshing. This would be a good summer beer. This is your next kayaking trip. <laughs> Bring there your you wife's go. There you beer. go. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> Brooks, what are you drinking, sir? The Big Woods Common Necessity is what Justin had in the first segment of the show. and Looks so good you had to try it. Oh, man. I had it one of my samples for the game, and it's, it is tasty. I really like the aftertaste. It's yeah. phenomenal. Is it the hazelnut, you think? I think so. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> trying to figure it out. But, man, I, I, I really do like it. And John? You got something that I would have ordered had you not ordered it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm getting a little out of my comfort zone with the barley wine. Um, I'm this may be like only the second or third barley wine I've had, ah. and I'm kind of uh, maybe I'm crazy, but it's kind of hoppy. I'm surprised ah, I got it it's on the an nose. American style. Barley okay. wine's traditionally an English style, and like if you get a real malty one, that's the English style. The American ones, and that's what the barrel test we had last week at Upland. It's yeah. got that kind of hop kick at the end. It, it's nice because going into it, I still had that cherry taste in my mouth <laughs> from that last thing, and this immediately erased all of that from my mouth. So uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's really good. It's really smooth. Um, so it's got a 9.6 alcohol, but... 
Ah, there you yeah, go. you know, it's 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 really drinkable. It's actually one of those things where I'm I, I'm probably going to regret the fact that I tried it <laughs> because it's 9.6, and I <laughs> and I'm going to really want to drink a lot of them. You're going to walk out of here like David Britton left us in uh, <laughs> there you a few go. episodes ago. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now the fact that it's it was eight bucks for a 12 ounce, well probably help me keep under control <laughs> but uh yeah it's really good i like it you're not gonna just gulp that back and order another no, no. <laughs> all right and justin from the dump buckets is still here and he ordered something and uh it's not a big woods but it's an interesting pick i'll let him kind of tell you about it uh yeah it's actually from a lexington brewing company and it's their main beer if you think lexington brewing company it's going to be this. It's their Kentucky Bourbon Barrel uh, oh, yeah. Ale. It's one of the best bourbon barrels. Uh, it's phenomenal. Beer. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, but we actually, our group did a tour down there, and we went through the distillery, the brewery, um, and they really take pride in their uh, their bourbon, and they have great, great stuff. Um, mm -hmm. If you ever uh, go down to Lexington, uh, definitely make a stop there. Sign up for the tour because they'll give you like really small tastings, but everything in there is beautiful. They have this huge bottling machine that I've only seen uh, the bottling machine at uh, Fountain Square Brewery Rival, uh, ah. and uh, they also they really take a lot of pride in their bourbon, and they have a just a beautiful setup. Uh, which, uh, for being a painter, uh, painting breweries, that is... Oh, uh, sure, yeah. I, I have a bunch of photographs that is like, I'm trying to focus more on Indiana breweries, but as soon as I get, like, a lull, I'm going straight to the photographs I have at that place. Huh. <laughs> well, and, and one thing I personally like about that uh, Lexington Brewing Company bourbon barrel is you... And it, it's becoming the new fad to bourbon barrel a lot of beers, but it's our, an existing beer... I think this one was intentionally made to be bourbon barreled. And I, I think that might be the only one that I'm aware of. Hmm. Well, actually, all of their beers are uh, intentionally made to be in bourbon barrels. I think the only one they don't do is their Kolsch. But I could be mm. wrong, which they sure. call their light beer, but it technically is a Kolsch. <laughs> uh, but everything else that comes out from them, especially their seasonals, they had a, mm -hmm. a peach bourbon barrel one. I think they just came out mm. with a rye uh, bourbon barrel uh, beer that is supposed to be distributed to Indiana sometime ah. this week, and uh, I've been looking, and I can't wait to get a, a four sure. pack of that. All right, so that's our second round, guys. This is going really well. I'm having <laughs> you fun. Try, John. You want to try this one? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it was, we we're going in for more, <laughs> more glass slams, <laughs> more cheers. <laughs> I'm going to try this barley wine real quick. You wanna... Yeah, I'll give her a, I'll give her a go. Might as well. Oh wow, that is. That is super unique. Yeah, because it's not as malt oh, forward well, as these last night, but some of them. But man, oh. I like that a lot. It's good. Mm. Yeah, yeah and so I don't smooth. pick up any of the alcohol in that. That yeah. could be dangerous. Well, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the alcohol in my face right now. That's I, a bit different yeah. than most barley wines. I've I had. it was not what I expected at all. John has turned bright red, yeah. but to some of the country, white and gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since you brought it up, we're going to talk about that. Because I'm, I'm furious about that whole thing. What did like, you see? Here's what I'm, – I'm sitting on my couch scrolling through the Twitters, and I see this picture of a dress, and it's like a big controversy. And I'm like, what is it? Like, what's the controversy? There's a blue and black dress in this picture, and I, I thought it was a joke. Like, it was like, oh, that's funny. So my wife walks in the room, and I go, Amanda – what color is this dress? She looks at it, she goes, white and gold. And I was like, holy shit. I, I just, and that just started the entire one-day research session of what the hell was happening. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I still don't get it, but, oh. <laughs> John, have you, do you know about this? Well, yeah, I kind of saw all that stuff going on, but I didn't didn't really dig too deep into it did you see the picture yeah what, what did you did you see white or well, gold you know, or I, black and blue? I think i saw like 19 different versions of the picture so no, i don't so know that's the I other get... problem actually yeah. there was this, the original this image the, this is the picture but okay. then quickly well, that people started blue photoshopping and me. blue and black that's what it looks that, like to that's, me that's the picture yeah. yeah what do you think i i saw blue and black also 
I, I saw blue and black. But yeah. the problem is, and and actually, we're in the minority, I should say, because didn't I, we start saw, off talking about Notre Dame football and IU basketball, <laughs> and now we're talking about this dress? <laughs> John, Sorry, it's America. Strong, Fashion I, I, is important. I felt strongly about it because I was so taken aback <laughs> when. Cheap, All right, I'm sorry. Said I, white and gold. I interrupted. What were you? <laughs> no, but 75% of the people apparently have seen white and gold, so it's kind of unique, I think, that the hmm. three of us saw blue and black. Hey, we're hitting all the important pop culture references here al- on this show. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Yesterday, I, mean, I was like, I'm going to bring this up tomorrow. And I, you're I, into I, beer. I forgot about it until you said it. But. Into Twitter, into Facebook, pop culture, this is your show. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm looking at... Uh, at uh, your guys' Twitter page right now, yeah, to see who you're following, and this may not mean anything to anyone outside of Bloomington, but it's all breweries and Kurt Messick. <laughs> <laughs> We're following Kurt Messick <laughs> and breweries. <laughs> hey, that's that's the way we roll. He was a guest. Well, guys, it is February 28th. Uh-oh. Yes, time for this day in beer history. Uh, today's today's headline comes from the Diligent Dutchman Daily, a publication from the town of uh, Berkel and Schott. That's a town in, in the Netherlands. I probably butchered it. <clears throat> and, and actually, the date from this article is February 29th, 1903. Ah. 1903? Yeah. Inventive monk creates new <laughs> recipe with timely twist. Uh, the monks at the local Tapest Abbey... I'm Dutch and I can't even pronounce the name of it, have been brewing for over a decade. First off, the journalistic integrity in, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in the Berkel early, Enshot might not be the best. Okay. In the early 1900s, sure. <laughs> uh, and while many love the beer that they have been offering, or they only have few offerings, I can't even read. And that's where brother Rundel Dundel, Van Dundel saw his opening. He has been at work perfecting his personal brewer's recipe for a year now, and today he has finally barreled it for aging. We asked Brother Van Dundel how long he plans to age it. I believe this new brew needs time to really let the yeast and alcohol build to give it a unique flavor. I believe I shall let this rest in oak barrels until this day next year. While we continue talking to Brother Van Dundel about how his new beer will have ripe fruit flavors, Another member of the Abbey reminded Brother Van Dundel that next February 29th was four years away. Abbot Jürgen <laughs> Gutenberg, Grutenberg told us Brother, Van, <laughs> Brother Rundel Van Dundel is a devout monk who is diligent with his prayers, but slower than the sap drip from the Abbey pear trees. <laughs> so it appears we will wait four years to try the new Abbey offering. The article, of course, goes on. But that has been this day in beer history. Nice. And I think that was actually the origin of the quadruple style. Ah, nice. makes sense. Wow. Four years of aging. Who knew? Old Rundle Doondle. Sorry, I had, I had problems reading today. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you should pre record those before you <laughs> start, <laughs> before the beer starts flowing. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a professional approach to this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I like the authentic drunk flavor that we've brought to this show (laughs) oh dear well guys it's been a really fun episode i want to thank big woods uh, oh yeah quaffon brewing uh because and and we're here at the bloomington tap room it's it's very it's great they opened it what maybe a year ago yeah just over if you're out in nashville though that's the real gem go there that is fantastic their food's great out there uh, I want to thank John Hancock for coming out and being our guest today. Hey, can I give a shout out to a brewery? Yeah. Oh. Um, there's a, it, uh, it's fairly new, uh, South Bend Brew Works. Uh, it's W E R K S. Uh, South Bend is n- not the most inviting place, but uh, <laughs> I was up there in January and they have opened a, a tap room uh, right downtown, which there's a, a big effort to revitalize that downtown. And, uh, it, the beer was amazing. The food was great. Uh, the entire place uh, is, uh, like, all the seats and tables are are made from uh, reclaimed materials. Uh, all of the artwork is local artwork. Uh, it's kind of got, like, a punk rock vibe to it. But uh, the beers were good. The food is good. Um, if you're up that way, I, I would definitely check it out. 
So, yeah. All right. And and actually, um, is is there anything you wanted to plug? Do you have any any big shows coming I, up that you want I, to let people? I actually do. Um, I'll be uh, featuring for Nate Bargetzi at the Comedy Attic, uh, March nineteenth through the twenty first, and then the next weekend uh, I'll be with Dwight Simmons at the Drop in South Bend. And then uh, I, was, I was telling Justin earlier, uh, on April 17th, uh, it's a Friday night, I'll be at Flat 12 in uh, ah, Indianapolis. For with the Gabe, rocket ship? Yeah, uh, Gabe Kia from Cincinnati, who's fantastic and a great guy. He's headlining. So uh, that's what I got coming up. Wow. And thank you guys for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Sure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for, the, for coming out on a Saturday afternoon like, and drinking with us. Like You, you guys actually like, uh, like listen when I started rambling on about beers as opposed to my <laughs> wife who just glazes over and nods her head. We share so the you're same sh- appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying she wouldn't be a good future guest then? Um, she could tell you what she doesn't like. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Like this so. this. Is one of those things you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and... <laughs> We're gonna well, this many that. beers in, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just reflecting on my own wife. Uh, <laughs> hey Justin, I want to thank you and the Dump Buckets for stopping by and Absolutely. sponsoring our first round. Is that on you? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that, happy to be here. It's great. Uh, the podcast is wonderful, and actually watching it in person was even more entertaining. Uh, I, I'm, and thank you for letting me be a part, be a part of it as well. Uh, I hope uh, a lot of success to your future, and I can't wait to uh, see John uh, perform at Flat 12 yeah. on April 17th. Uh, cool. Thank you. They do great shows, yeah. and John's going to be a great part of it. Yeah. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's for damn sure. All right, guys. For Brooks and me and all of the Who's Drinking What Nation, drink on. <laughs> Sitting on my bed in my red pajamas Watching Michigan State take on Indiana And honey, thought you'd like to know I don't mean to be apologizing And I hate wasting time philosophizing Cause baby, I'm a little bit slow Know a lot of people catch on to things quicker And maybe I spend too much time with my liquor And I stand still while the others go And I never get jokes until hours later And then I crack up in a crowded elevator Cause baby, I'm a little bit slow